Hey you guys, so you know I had to come back and I had to do an update video <laughs> on the content that I was uh, uploading yesterday. Um, I almost called her Sister Shaniqua, she's not a sister. She's not a Christian, I'm sure y'all could tell by the video. You know, there was some uh, some profanity, a lot of New Age ling language, so she's not a Christian. But her video, and I had actually recorded um, the Jezebel Revelation Nugget, the one that I did yesterday. I uploaded that one first, but hers got uploaded quicker because I downloaded her video on my laptop. And for some reason, it just uploads quicker on my computer versus me trying to upload a video from my phone so I saw her video afterwards and what actually led me to hers it, it was the Lord that led me to her video but um I was writing down I think this week I'm working on dreams with him so I was writing down the many dreams that he's given me about the Jezebel spirit and just my personal deliverance and things like that and I was think I was talking y'all about that uh, particular cousin in the video I did yesterday and it just, it just, I was taking a break from writing and I just went to go lay down. I got on the laptop and it just made me just want to, I guess, look up videos about narcissism. Basically what I was already talking about in my video. So I just typed in like narcissism, Jezebel spirit, uh, because I like, um, I like watching people that have a very heavy revelatory, um, perspective when it comes to Jezebel and just narcissism I like watching teachings and stuff like that the only sister I know who actually is a sister in the faith that kind of broke it down because she also had an experience with a narcissistic male I think her channel is I don't even know what her channel is I'm not even going to, I think it's in my playlist though my Jezebel spirit playlist her videos are there and she used to be a Satanist. She's, she's completely in the Lord now. She's a very, very sweet sister. My spirit bears witness with her. We are extremely like-minded, but I don't think she has her comment section open. So she doesn't do too much like dialogue with other Christians and stuff, but she has videos. I think she did maybe two or more years ago and she was breaking down the Jezebel spirit from a spiritual perspective and uh, breaking down narcissism. There's also a brother in Christ whose channel is centered around Jezebel and narcissism too, but I forgot what his channel is called. If I find it, I'll just put it in the description box, but I had to come back because, oh, <laughs> oh my goodness, man. I watched Shaniqua's video probably like 10 times. Like I already knew these things, but just to hear her explain it in a way of, um, I really can't explain it. You know, um, people that are in the occult, they have a very new age perspective and outlook and things, you know, there's a level of deception with that as we already know, but because they are, um, sensitive to the spirit realm, in the wrong source but they still are you know engaging in the spirit realm they're still seeing and experiencing a lot of truths that the bible already talks about so for her to literally explain a vision she visually saw how the jezebel spirit enters somebody that actually is the same exact revelation the father had been teaching me about the jezebel spirit um and I just want to put that out there because I know there's a whole bunch of other Christians he probably is teaching that same thing about. They may not have YouTube channels. I don't know. I posted her video because although she's not a sister, I don't know too many people really um, exposing the Jezebel spirit. They really know like the depths of this spirit. You know, when you hear Christians talk about Jezebel, it's just like about makeup or pretty much what she was already saying somebody who just looks a certain way or like a bossy woman or somebody who wants to be in authority. Like that's qualities that that spirit will manifest through somebody personality wise but that's not all that that spirit consists of and um she had like a profound revelation i just felt like i had to share especially since the lord led me to it because me and him been talking about my deliverance and i've been like begging and just seeking him about what method he wants to go about with me to help me get delivered and i guess he led me to her video to let me know it's not that simple <laughs> you know it's more than likely not something you can do by yourself and if if you do go through that period of your deliverance from Jezebel with the Lord, it will be a very long process. I don't think you can do it by yourself simply because of what we learned from watching her video. And somebody commented, uh, <laughs> Sister Valerie commented and the Lord never taught me that Jezebel enters the uh, pineal gland. Uh, I, I didn't know anything about that. Um, I didn't know how she entered, but now that I watched Shaniqua's video in this, uh, sister Valerie, you commented saying how, um, you said these demons come in through abuse and travel up the spine and start manipulating its victims pineal gland. 
I don't know anything about the pineal gland. <laughs> I'm assuming I know it's I know it's in a lot of new age videos. I'd have to be prayerful before watching something like that. But um from what I do know, and y'all can, if y'all have more information than I do, I guess I could look it up on Google. Uh, <laughs> I think the pineal gland is, um, you know what it makes me think about? I, I definitely do believe that there are different compartments to us in the spirit and us being made in the image of God. And um, how the new age, they always talk about, you know, the seven chakras or whatever, the, you know, that's net that we have that we can uh, connect to the divine or different parts of the spirit realm. It makes me think about the seven spirits of God that Revelation talks about. And um, I don't deny that um, what they have access to and what they kind of, um, I'm trying to find a nice way to say it because they shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> you know. I think that there are certain parts to us that are definitely shut off and deactivated due to the sin nature and uh, due to the curse um, that the Holy Spirit has to activate. I don't think that we should be activating those compartments of ourselves through any new age practices or occultism or spiritism or anything like that because it's very dangerous. And uh, these people, what they don't know, they are getting a lot of good revelation and spiritual gems and truths. I don't know. I noticed she kept saying she was channeling. I kind of wanted to do this video to go over hers with y'all because I didn't want to like be a stumbling block to anybody. Um, which I'm sure some of y'all know how to chew the meat and spit out the bones when you're watching something. But I have a lot of babes watching me. So she was she had a lot of new age language that she was using. Uh, for example, she kept referring to God as the source. So when she says source, you know, she's talking about the father, obviously. Um, lower vibrational entities, you know, or things like that. And uh, entity attachment, those are obviously demonic spirits. And um, even in the Christian uh, community, there's a lot of different... Um, conversations about that and you know Derek Prince has a whole book saying that he doesn't even think that demons are fallen angels you know so he goes into a broad conversation about um Nephilim spirits you know what Jezebel is Jezebel a fallen angel or a lot of these spirits you know that uh inhabit you know Christians or human beings that you know that make us demonize that we personally need deliverance from they could just be the spirits of you know, giants <laughs> that used to be here, you know, when they were mixing with the seed of women, they got left over from the flood. So that people like, you know, teach that, that every spirit that somebody is dealing with, or what she's referring to, lower vibrational demons that are looking for humans to feast on that are in the earth realm or in the very next dimension, you know, from us, uh, or not necessarily fallen angels, because some Christians teach that fallen angels are too high ranking and they would never inhabit a, a, a person. That may be true. So there's many different kinds of spirits. You know, you got to think Satan has invented so many different kinds of supernatural creatures to prepare for the battle of Armageddon <laughs> and, you know, just his war against the father. So marine spirits, uh, Nephilim spirits, everything you've seen in sci-fi movies, they are real. It's just a matter of uh, these could be things that Satan very well could have created over time through illegal means, of course. Like, for example, having angels to, you know... Um, copulate with uh, human women and you have what we have today is hybrids today that is a real thing there are reptilian people okay that's I've seen it in dreams they've come to me in dreams it's all on your tv it's in um x-men so I don't think that every single spiritual entity is a fallen angel I, they are a part of the kingdom of darkness and I do think there are definitely rankings of different kinds of spirits because the word does tell us that one third of the angels are what fail so we don't have all those insights uh people who are in the new age they have they do have certain insights i'm not saying that what they're um receiving is true or false you have to line up what you hear some stuff the lord will allow you to kind of um watch like her video is confirmation today i'm not saying just go to material like that and just start sucking it up because um I do think to some degree they are getting information from demonic spirits and we all know that they are in complete control of how much they give those people, you know, so it could be 99% truth, 1% lie. So I would just say, um, definitely let, uh, the, the information that you're taking in, if you do choose to watch something like that, be very prayerful about it first and just ask the Holy Spirit to guard and protect your mind and your heart. And it, from any transference as well, from any videos like that. And also for him to only allow you to understand and perceive what he wants you to hear, what he wants you to see. And um, basically just test everything by the Holy Spirit. He'll let you know what information they're giving you is true. Because some, some videos I watch like that, like Young Pharaoh, 
I like some of Young Pharaoh's content because he gives a lot of spiritual and scientific background to things like why they do satanic rituals and what purpose it really serves. They're not doing it just to be nasty. Um, so I like watching stuff like that, but I would not refer Young Pharaoh <laughs> necessarily to anybody because he has so much so much darkness just profanity and just uh, just it's so much new age stuff embedded into it unless you're just a really mature christian that knows how to watch something like that and you can sift through what is probably valuable truthful information as the holy spirit is confirming and bearing witness within you and just tossing the rest out i probably wouldn't watch videos like that i would just go to the holy spirit alone and ask him to teach you those things which we all should do but um yeah um I don't, I don't know too much about the pineal gland, but I think it is, going back to what I was saying a few minutes ago, different compartments of us. I do think that we're made in the Father's image. I do think that there are different parts to us that serve or probably can attribute to certain dimensions in different realms. And that probably got shut off. And that is what got cut off when Adam and Eve sinned and they got, you know, cast out of the garden and they weren't in fellowship with God anymore. So... It probably wasn't just, oh, fathers walking in the garden with them. I do think that they probably had access to him in a way to where every compartment of them that the New Age always re refers to as uh, chakras and all that stuff or the seven different vibrations that we have in our spirits or whatever to connect to God. I think that the father did put that in us, but I don't think that he activates that in everybody because obviously you are subject and you're vulnerable to spiritual contamination because all the spirits that she talks about <laughs> that they always refer to as lower vibrational entities as demons okay basically the earth is cursed okay due to the sin nature okay unless you're a christian you're the only you're literally the only community of people on this earth that really have that dominion of the earth and that authority and power given back to you in christ everything else here is cursed your food is cursed your land is cursed unless the Lord specifically has blessed it and you know how to actually do warfare like that and um, cleanse your property and with anointing oil and prayer and everything like that. Everything here is cursed. So it's not that I don't believe those things are true. I just don't think the Father activates those parts of us because... <sighs> It's, I mean, demons don't care. Look, look, look what you just learned, how they come into babies and they come into toddlers through sexual abuse. They're looking for somebody to feast on. They're looking for a way to get into you as a host body and into your temple. So what do you think is going to happen if you open up your spirit and start astral projecting and start, uh, you know, subjecting different parts of your soul? You don't even know how soul fragmentation works. So you could be trying to, you know, play with this stuff, not knowing that you're fragmenting yourself in the process, trying to practice it. And you don't know what they're doing with that stuff, you know? So I believe it's there. I believe it's real. I think that the Lord is the one, you know, once again, I, I thank God that he has us in a position to be submitted to him as uh, as his people, because um, obviously lawless people, they don't have the Torah. They're going to, you know, they're going to gravitate towards more new age things and they're going to play with all those different realms, you know, whatever they want to do, um, they're chancing it. I think demons are really just playing them and using them as a host to do what they want to do here, honestly. Because if a demon wanted to, they could rip you to shreds. They have every legal right to do so if you're doing something like that. Um, it's illegal what you're doing. It is shut off in the sense that it got deactivated when we got cut off from the Father. That means that the Father has to be the one to reactivate it. And that's only going to be done in Christ and through the Holy Spirit. And I think that that is... Um, that is how we experience visions from the Lord or certain encounters with him and maybe, you know, heavenly encounters or him taking us up into the spirit, you know, things like that. I think that the father picks and chooses what times he wants to activate those parts of us because they're there. But in the sense of, you know, being restored into right fellowship with God, like it used to be in the garden, it would only serve the purpose of the Holy Spirit in the kingdom anyway. So if that's not what you're going to do it for, I'm not going to let you do it, especially if it's going to subject you to harm, <laughs> you know, and being taken over by these demonic entities. So, yeah. So I don't know too much about the pineal gland. Maybe y'all know more than I do. But um, it just sounds like it. Um, I keep going in circles. Just <laughs> I don't want to sound silly. I guess uh, I know that is tied to some part of your subconscious or your spiritual mind, but somebody said something about a spine. I guess those things are connected somehow spiritually, but 
Um, when she was talking about how Jezebel comes into, or it came through the guy's spine, and then it exploded in the back of his head, it made me think about the Kundalini spirit, because that's the only spirit I have been taught about. Sister Rebecca Brown in Prepare for War, and he came to set the captives free, but I think it was Prepare for War where she specifically talked about New Age. She exposed it. I actually read that book on my channel. I don't know which video it is, but it's up here somewhere. And she, um, I know that Kundalini, people who practice yoga and that are into new age practices, the yoga positions themselves are meant to position your body in a way to where, I guess, the most sensitive parts of your chakras and all that stuff is um, being exposed, <laughs> you know, as you're chanting and meditating and all that. You're calling on these demon principalities and these demon gods that they think are spirit gods and energies to help them. Okay, it's not just energies, it's spirits. We, we know that we're Christians, but... That's what yoga practice and all those yoga positions is for. To position your body in a way to where the spirit has easy access to get into your spine. <laughs> easy access to get into you through those chakras, you know, that that, was, that she was talking about. So um, that's what it made me think about that Jezebel. And if she's doing that, then she's probably not the only spirit that's doing that then. It's probably a whole bunch of different spirits that probably come in that way. So now we know that it's not just a situation of demons coming to abide in your flesh or just some part of your soul. I mean, they're going above and beyond to, I guess, maybe coming through the pineal gland or pi, I may be pronouncing that. I like seeing pineal. I don't care how you pronounce it. Okay. I like seeing pineal gland. I think that's the part of you that's probably, um, maybe easier to control the person by mentally and on a spiritual level as well. I think those things could be connected and they probably can't tell the difference between what's them unless the Holy Spirit starts exposing those things to you and thankful to him. You know, the word of God says that it's a double-edged sword and it cuts between bone and marrow, soul and spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the word of God as well. So that's how Christians, that's how he's able to teach us and give us revelation that we're probably dealing with the same things, but we're able to discern between what's us and what isn't. That's how I'm able to talk about it like that. <laughs> so it's like, he's teaching me what I'm dealing with. I'm aware that she's here. I've already seen some things in my personality and just some things in my walk along that I know for a fact are not really me, that he's already exposed. But greater is he that is with us, within us than uh, he that is in the world, or I should say she because <laughs> we're talking about Jezebel so I don't think it's going to be a situation to where um the Christian is just so overtaken you know by um unless they're yielding to that spirit <sighs> so um I don't think it's a situation to where most of us who are really like seeking the Lord and really growing in a relationship with him and seeking to get delivered to where a spirit like that kundalini or jezebel or whatever would just completely take over like your whole mental without the holy spirit somehow making you aware illumination wise that this is not of god and that this is something else he's done that for me for like over the course of like five or six years so i believe that he would do that for other christians so we can have a mature conversation about it but still be in need of deliverance from something like that so um it was just i had just I had to make a video because I just had stuff like literally exploding in my mind with what, with what she was saying. And I really do appreciate the perspective that they come with sometimes because um, I do think the Holy Spirit would definitely give us those very same revelations. You just don't have a lot of Christians that are really consecrated unto him like that to receive that kind of heavy stuff from him. Or um, we probably don't do enough fasting. And I'm going to talk about fasting in a few minutes. But I like the perspective that they give because it parallels a lot of biblical truths that Father has already told us. I think the revelation, the detail that they provide on their side, I think is hidden in the revelation of the word. But we have to seek the Father out for that. They're able to tell you the specifics of how they can feel different vibrations. They see different entities and what they look like and how they can go into people because they're seeing that stuff you know they're in the spirit realm they're able to experience that as would we you know if we were more surrendered to the lord but all i was thinking about when she was talking about uh i'm trying to go in the order <sighs> entity i want to talk about that the entity attachment that she was talking about obviously that's a new age term Entity attachment, I guess, in, in our language, <laughs> I guess I may have to translate for us. 
Um, for us, that would just be how we always say we are susceptible or vulnerable to demonic oppression or um, demonization or um, coming under the influence of a demonic spirit or maybe being attacked by a demonic spirit. I like how she explained it because she pretty much pointed out that these spirits are always around us. They're always here. They'll call them energies, but basically the spirits are always here. And I already put like a long comment, a long thread under her video. I don't know if y'all are going to read it though, so that's why I'm making this one. All I could think about when she was saying that is like, this is why the word of God tells us to put off the old man, you know, crucify the old man, crucify the lust and the deeds of the flesh. And Paul will specifically detail certain things, you know, that we shouldn't walk in and that we shouldn't harbor in our hearts, like, you know, envy, jealousy, greed, lust, malice, uh, hypocrisy, or he tells us to love one another with unfeigned love, um, not shallow, not superficial. So Paul is naming things like basically in, in their terms would be lower vib vibrational things or on a lower frequency that demons are more susceptible to relate to. And that makes sense because those things are of the sin nature. And I wanted to scream that when I was typing it, like in my little comment thread, I was like, shh, shh. <laughs> like I wanted to scream it. I should have put it in caps because I'm like hearing their perspective and how they word it from what they're seeing in the spirit realm those truths are still there. The father is basically telling us the same thing in the word, but I like how she explained it because I don't think Christians really see sin in the perspective of, you know, this has nothing to do with your true nature, right? Like, I think I did a video about this last year and I was talking about uh, a revelation of grace that the Lord had gave me. I don't know what the heck happened to that video. Like I took my channel down. I downloaded every video before I deleted my channel last year and it just disappeared. <laughs> like, even the people who downloaded my videos that sent them back to me, like nobody downloaded that Revelation of Grace video. I don't even know like what happened to it. But um, these things are literally not a part of our nature. It has nothing to do with the kingdom of God. And I like how she kept talking about spiritual parasites and all these, you know, lower vibrational emotions and feelings like rage and anger. These things are not associated with God at all. And if Christians saw it that way, it would make more sense to you why a lower vibration was never what you were created to be abiding in. It's it's a it's a it's a result of the curse of the sin nature. Jesus came to become a curse for you to redeem you and restore you back to what you were originally supposed to be. So when we yield to things like that, when you yield to um, that's why the word says, "Be angry but sin not." Or, you know, be angry, but don't let the sun go down on your anger. So he's basically saying, I know y'all are going to experience these things because you are human, but don't stay in that place for too long. Or maybe uh, in Matthew, I think chapter <sighs> chapter five, I think when uh, Jesus was um, was basically saying, you know, if you're um, if you come to the altar, you know, before you you know come to the altar, go and make peace with your brother. If you've, if you've offended your brother or you know that your brother has some type of offense against you or something like that. Go reconcile with your brother first. Agree with your adversary quickly, the person who's in opposition in their heart against you, and be reconciled with them. And then you come and you give your gift to the altar. And um, lest he deliver you to the judge. So he, I think that the Lord was even given like a process and an example of the process, how anger goes, or it goes from anger to murder. So if you stay in that place for too long, you are going to make yourself susceptible to spirits, like she was saying, that are already looking for that kind of energy, so to speak. They're already looking for somebody. And what is everything she was saying is biblical. She was just using new age terms. Like the Bible tells us that, you know, uh, be sober, be vigilant, because Satan, you know, as a roaring lion, is seeking whom he may devour. So she keeps saying, you know, spiritual parasites are looking to feast on you. They're looking to feed. The Bible already told you that, okay? She's using two, new age terminology, but. Yeah, the Lord told us already he's looking to feast on you. He's a lion looking for who he can devour. That's his whole camp. Satan can only, he's subject, um, I think the serpent was cursed to eat the dust for the rest of his life. That's the carnal sin nature. That's the beast. So that that's what he's subject to eat for the rest of his days. This is why the Lord tells you to put off those things. Anything that's associated with the sin nature, with the flesh, anger, you know, being bitter, us being unforgiving and, um... Just all those, all those negative attributes, you know, you can, you don't need somebody to teach you about vibrations to know that that stuff makes you feel sick inside. You literally have no peace when you're upset with somebody. 
you know, you're not going to have any peace unless you really go to this sister and make peace with her, apologize to her. Y'all actually talk those things out and just staying in a place how the Lord already tells us in the word, you know, pursue peace with all men. It's like all of God's laws are literally centered around the truth that this girl was talking about in the video because the father knows what kind of spirits are laying wait for us. And it's just so many scriptures I had just literally popping up in my head when she was talking. Cain is an example. How father was telling Cain in Genesis, master your anger or it will overcome you. If you do good, I will accept you. I will receive you, you know, but sin lieth at the door and wait for you. And its desire is for you. So he's already telling Cain, if you don't take care of this in your heart, that bitterness, that jealousy, that anger that you're feeling towards your brother, there is a spirit that is uh, that can relate that's paralleling that same emotion that you're feeling and it's going to overcome you because you choose to yield to that and then things like murder is going to take place so he's already warning you y'all need to stay away from this crap that's not me it was never me and you're made in my image so it's not you i'm showing you who you are through the scriptures i'm showing you who you are through my law this is who you were always made to be this is who i came to restore you to be identity wise so the things that we yield to just because it's common and familiar doesn't mean that it's it's normal. That's very abnormal. God did not make you to be that way. You're choosing to be that way. You're choosing to yield to the sin nature. You're choosing to yield and yield to and walk in something that God has already delivered you from. That doesn't make any sense, you know? <clears throat> so, um, oof, <laughs> I was just like exploding. Like, oh my God, this is so crazy. Like, I love seeing it that way. Because the way she was making it sound, or I, I guess the revelation she was giving us, the reality of what it is, is that these spirits are nothing more than spiritual parasites. You know, uh, they need carnality. They need the beast nature. They need the 666 of man. They, they need people who are Torah list. They don't, they don't have the law of God in their hearts. They need people who are anti-God to feast on these individuals because they're already looking for a host body to not only, you know, implement their agenda here, but it's, it's warfare against the kingdom of God. And the more carnal we are, we can already expect the world to be like that because the world is under, still under the sin nature and they're still under the curse. But the more Christians are yielding to stuff like that, and we're not taking care of that stuff that's in our hearts and that bitterness that's in our spirits. You need to get cleansed of that stuff. You know, we make it easier for the enemy because he's not just fighting you. It's not a personal battle. He's fighting the kingdom of God. He's just using these gullible people to do it. Because they want to yield to that. They're literally food for demons. That's all they are. You know, and y'all, I've done several messages on that. I know y'all know people in your life and your family, you know, they're completely reprobate, aren't they? <laughs> you got people, you probably got somebody in your household right now. The Lord already exposed them to you. And the way this person functions, the way they talk to you, the way they just, just their whole lifestyle, like they're completely turned over. That spirit, those spirits, they're, they're so full of demons. They're, they're, the person is completely gone. That is a reality. Whew. So um, it really just motivated. It motivates you the way she was explaining it in the perspective that she gave us. It really motivates you to live a clean and holy lifestyle because now I get it. Okay, now it's not, oh, I have to obey God because the Bible tells me to. I always say that, you know, in different messages. But, you know, it's not, oh, I have to obey God because I'm a Christian and I'm supposed to. I understand I need to follow like these biblical and godly principles and these laws because now I see why the Lord says certain things are defiling or it makes you spiritually unclean. Learning something like that, like what she was explaining in that video, like we already know the spirits are all around us. So we don't really take it that serious enough to fully and completely surrender our hearts to God and really obey him and, you know, come into alignment with his laws. But when you start to see it like that, like everything around you is polluted. Everything you touch is polluted. And, you know, you have to stay on a certain wavelength that is the Holy Spirit, that is abiding in the Holy Spirit, which walking in the Spirit is actually walking in God's commandments. You know, he's not separate from God's commandments. That is walking in truth. 119 Ministries actually has a, a wonderful message about that. I'm going to put that in the description box. It's lovely. And they have one on a repentance, too, that I really, really like. But, um... It, it makes you want to live holy because if somebody was to watch a video like that, not, not even, you know, whether it's new age or not, just to get the information, it's like, oh my God, like, that's disgusting. <laughs> you know, like, how do I get clean? That's the first thing somebody will say. Well, how do I get cleansed of that? You have to walk in the word. You know, this is what I think it's in, um, is it Psalms or 
Proverbs, how does a man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to thy word. So you cleanse yourself by the washing of water, by the word. That's Ephesians. So after learning something heavy like that, that spirits literally are acting as parasites. Literally, they are parasites. And uh, I don't think every demon is like that. I think I'm, I'm glad that she put emphasis on lower vibrational spirits because I think... I think those are the particular spirits that she's referring to that are kind of in our domain in the earth realm. That's the closest to us because you do have different dimensions. You know, we have principalities and powers and rulers there in the heavenlies, but you have spirits on the earth realm, too. That's the closest to us. Those are the spirits that she was referring to that she called entity attachment. Those are the spirits that can easily use somebody to attack you or easily use somebody to snap at you at work and their spiritual war war uh, warfare in the workplace and wherever you go. That's the spirits that's lingering here. And it's very easy to, as she said, you know, feast on people like that because they're not in the Lord. They're in the carnal sin nature. They're already perishing, you know. It's kind of sad to think about, really. It's disgusting, too. When, and I also have scripture pop in my mind how the word says, you know, there in the flesh there dwells, you know, there's no good thing in me in my flesh. I think Paul was saying that. And there isn't, you know, to find out that or to just have the realization that your flesh is literally it's just it's dirty. It's filthy. It, the sin nature, it's its a curse. It's its like you willingly being in agreement to live as a zombie. It's like a, a garbage dump. You're comfortable eating poison and trash. You're comfortable having demons inside of you and the very things that defile you like bitterness, like anger, like unforgiveness, and all these other disgusting things are the main things that make you a, a magnet or a target for things like that. That's disgusting. You know, it makes me think of like, um, like how you've been having like some old food in the trash, not in the trash, like in the corner of your room or under your bed somewhere and like roaches and rats will eventually go to that. So that's stuff that's in our hearts that God tells us to get cleansed of or, you know, to get healing from that stuff. Get that out of you. That is that trash. And those spirits are the rats and the roaches. Like, they... I mean, just... I mean, come on. Like, <laughs> just the way she was explaining it. I was like... I think I was uh, I was talking to my cousin about it, too, a couple hours ago. Because uh, me and him were watching the video again together. It was like my 11th time watching the video because <laughs> I was showing it to him. And um, we were talking about the elite and how the elite they obviously have this knowledge they have that spiritual knowledge about um how vibrations and stuff work because that would make sense why they set up all these look at the food they give you all the fast food restaurants the fast food chains that we have it's not real food or they give you gmo food today it's almost like they know that if we give you toxic food we know that these spirits or these entities are looking for things like that. So we can fill you up with that. It makes you even more susceptible and more vulnerable to demonic uh, oppression and possession. They're doing it purposely. So it's like warfare against the kingdom and Christians by doing something like that. But I think it's also to keep people as like sheep. You know, it's easier to keep you mind controlled. It's easier to keep you... um just like just puppets basically you're just completely blinded in the matrix because they understand how that stuff works and that's scary and it just makes you think about how the father is literally like screaming out and crying out to people through proverbs how long will you hate wisdom how long will you know live vain and futile and you know um just just foolish lives you know like come to me come to my word you know take this wisdom you know Basically, everything the Lord is saying in Proverbs, because he knows this stuff. Like, I know what they're doing to you. The food that y'all giving y'all, I gave you dietary laws, but you want to say it's legalistic. Okay, well, stay a parasite. <laughs> you Like, the Lord is telling you. It's kind of sad that the Lord has to use New Age people to give heavy revelations like that, because people can't even take simple truths from the Bible. Like, he's been telling you this stuff, but they're already saying it. They're just giving a little bit more detail to it. And some of it is kind of, you know, skewed, and some of it is very truthful, but... The Lord already knows all this stuff. He knows that the entire world is under Satan's domain, that it's very much cursed, that your sin nature is cursed. I don't want you walking in it. I don't want y'all fornicating. The stuff defiles you. It's disgusting. And it makes you susceptible to the very spirits, sexual spirits of sexual immorality. You don't know what spirits you're going to take on when you start masturbating and doing stuff like that. You will become spiritually unclean. Then finding out something like Jezebel goes into the pineal gland, you don't know how these spirits come up. And that's disgusting that you have something in you like that because of a sin that you're that you're walking in. 
it's 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 just gross. And um, yeah, me and him were talking about that, and we were also saying how when it comes to Satanism and the occult, it makes sense why they have them do these disgusting rituals like eating poop and drinking piss because it's like they know that they have to keep them at the most basest frequency possible so that those kind of demons that has to use these people or the kind of powers and abilities that those Satanists may need, those, the lowest demons possible, you have to be at that much of a base layer to even be parallel or equal to the unclean spirits that they use in Satanism. That is disgusting. Eating poop, drinking piss, having orgies and having sex with the same sex and be married and y'all just swingers. That's why they do it. So there's always a scientific and a spiritual reason why they're doing stuff like that. That's really pathetic that he basically has a kingdom of nothing but slaves. I don't think if they if they fully understood that knowledge wise about like Satan is literally just making you something to just feast on. He's just using your vessel and your temple as a means of arsenal and maybe promising you some powers and some, I don't know, some rewards along the way. I don't think that they would probably be into it. They have some deception tied into that with why they're into that stuff. But, oh, my God. I just... We just think the Lord is against us so much, and it's, it's because we lack wisdom. You have to ask him, if you don't, um, <laughs> somebody actually can use sugar. If you don't, you know, the Father says, you know, let him who lacks wisdom come to God and ask him, and, you know, he's, he's not going to reject you if you come and ask him for wisdom. So if you don't understand why there's certain laws in place in the Bible, why you have to follow certain dietary laws, or maybe you, you are under the impression, like, well, I don't know, should we keep the Torah? Is it legalistic? Ask him. Okay, Father, what is your will? Is it your will for us to still keep these certain things? And, and you know, if so, why? And he will give you a full-blown revelation. He has no problem. He told you already, if you ask me for it, I'm going to give you wisdom. Nobody's asking for it. You know? And um, she had young Pharaoh's video in her description box, which, like I said, I would not refer <laughs> young Pharaoh to anybody. I mean, I don't... I don't prefer to watch him, but I'm, I'm the kind of person I can watch certain things and it doesn't really like, it's not just going to throw me off completely like it probably would a babe in Christ. And I wouldn't take something like that in like repetitively just to get the informational, you know, benefit from it. But I don't know if, if y'all are one of those Christians and you're mature and you can stomach something like that and you can get past all the profanity and the black egyptian new age jargon that young pharaoh talks about he actually made some pretty good points about physical and spiritual parasites and how um i can't even really explain it how he was saying it in the video i just know that he was saying that um he was talking about the food that they serve us here in the world and how it's meant to make you sick. It's meant to keep you on a very low vibration, which is why you should eat foods that are more alkaline, which honestly, that's a raw vegan diet, which is what the Lord originally gave us. I'm like, well, that makes sense. I'm not saying every Christian should be a vegan because the dietary laws that we do have in scripture do permit us to eat meat. So I don't think it's the Lord's will for everybody, everybody to be a vegan. However, depending on where you live and where most of us are in America, we don't have access to a lot of healthy organic stuff. So it would make sense for us to probably eat more of a plant-based lifestyle. Now that you know that food can put you uh, in different um, frequencies, so to speak. And um, I wouldn't say that. I know that some vegans come from a place of a... Uh, they try to make it a spiritual thing and say that you're more connected. I think that I think that that's what they mean when they say that if you eat more of a plant-based diet, you're more connected to God because they start getting into the whole vibrations and uh frequencies you know type of thing i wouldn't say that it brings you closer to god only christ can bring you closer to god but i think what they're trying to explain to you is that certain foods that make you sick that give you physical parasites because it is unclean food whether it's dietary laws in the bible or just fake processed food that we've been eating that's not real food that god does not want us eating at all um it does make you more susceptible to the spirits that are also on that particular plane. And that is something the Father does not want us involved in. So that for that reason, that should be enough for somebody to obey dietary laws in the Word of God. God's just trying to protect you. Um, every, every law that He gave us, nothing is just a clothing law. Nothing is just a head covering for 
symbolism. Like, no, I think everything, every law that God gave us is for spiritual protection from something heavy, like what we just saw in her video, what she's talking about. So, um, I always say, you know, um, as a dad, your parents don't always have to tell you why when they tell you to do something. You should just do it because they said it. You know, it's not that God can't give you the revelation of why you should head cover or why you should. Um, and I've already done a message about that. I was just using it as an example in the revelation that God gave me. How um, a woman not having her head covered. Uh, first of all, her hair and her scarf as well is a spiritual shield to her. The Lord taught me that personally from certain demonic spirits. So we have so many different kinds of coverings. And, uh, essentially, our first covering is obeying the word of God and being covered by our covenant with him. And uh, Satan does not have legal right to touch us. And even we could be in a cursed world, which we are. But if we are God's people obeying his laws wherever we may be, um, the earth realm obviously is sick and disgusting and it's cursed. But Satan and these spirits here cannot touch us because we are protected by fire because we're walking in the laws of the Lord. So it's not that he can't give you the revelation of why you should obey certain principles that he blatantly tells you to do. No matter how much you want to disregard or treat it like it's, it's something you don't have to obey as a Christian. You need to do it because God told you to do it. And if you do want to know why, just ask him. Just ask him. I actually love getting revelations from him about stuff like that because it, it just motivates you to want to do it after you learn something like that. Like, I'm probably going to watch her video again. It, it motivates you to want to live a clean, holy life. Now that you just told me that there are demons that are spiritual parasites that are looking to feast on certain emotions that are not attributed to my father's character or nature at all, I'm going to purposely make sure I don't feel those things. I'm going to purposely make sure... I guard my heart like scripture already tells me to, duh, right? We know that, but we still don't do it. I'm going to make sure I don't, you know, put myself in positions or with certain relationships or certain, you know, situations that are going to make me more prone to offense. So I can protect my heart from that because I don't want to go down to that place of cursing. You know, there's in witchcraft. Witchcraft is bitterness. Witchcraft is unforgiveness. It's all those negative things. You may not be implementing and carrying those things out against somebody, but witchcraft is in your heart. So um, spirits can pick up on that. And I was thinking about that too. And she was saying how when somebody is being raped or sexually abused, it's like a part. What I'll process it as when she was saying that uh, it's a part of them that cries out spiritually, a part of their spirit. I think it kind of lines up with, how I always say that what we do or what we say communicates to the spirit realm uh, vibrationally because we are spirits as well and our words have power. So you have spirits when you're cursing somebody, when you're speaking negatively about somebody, there are certain spirits that can hear things like that. And they obviously relate to that because they're already abominable and disgusting. They're already ungodly and unlike God. So when they hear you speaking negatively and cursing and um, just you know, not, not blessing somebody basically, you are, you're not just a target, you're more like a magnet. It's, al it's, al it's almost like we're inviting spirits like that to come and, you know, come, not only come into us, but to be used by them. <sighs> that is, it's just so gross. You know, you really need to get into your heart that Father, it's disgusting to him. When he says that something is abominable to him, that means he utterly hates and detests that thing. Like, it is really disgusting because he can see it for what it is. It repulses him. Like, that's not me. That's not my character. That's not my nature. I hate that y'all do that. I wish you could see what this looks like in the spirit when y'all are doing things like that. And the spirits that are literally just all over you and inside of you. Like, that's nasty. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's some stuff like you, you wouldn't you wouldn't pick up somebody's dirty pad and eat it, would you? OK, well, then you don't don't do things the word don't tell you to do because it's spiritually defiling. It's the same thing just because you can't see the entities that attach themselves to you when you speak certain things or when you carry a certain type of spirit or a certain type of emotion or feeling in your heart that you haven't surrendered to God and obedience to him. They can pick up on, on that stuff and they will gravitate to you, you know. So when she was talking about that how when somebody's being raped or somebody's experiencing trauma, it's like a part of their spirit is broken in that vibration. I kind of saw it when she was talking, it's like a vibration that ripples through the spirit realm. And some spirits, you already have them lying in wait. They, they're probably already targeted the child. If it is a generational spirit, they're already targeting you and probably caused it to happen to you in the first place. So when you cry out in that place, that, that part of you is made vulnerable, they immediately leech on. <laughs> they immediately, you know, come into contact with that. So, um... It makes you really want to 
walk carefully before the Lord and really walk carefully you know, in his laws and his commandments. Because if everything that we do and that we say is that sensitive to not just spiritual laws that God has set in place and things that we can set in motions that people would term as vibrations and frequencies and ripples and things like that, but actual energies or spirits. Ugh, it's... Ugh. Come on, y'all. We got to do better. You have to... God gave you a whole new nature. He said you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. I gave you a brand new nature for you to walk in. I'm telling you how to walk in it. The Holy Spirit can empower you to walk in this now. You could not do it before. All of that stuff that we have in us, it's not who you are. So stop walking in it. It's disgusting. That's not God's image. You're made in God's image. It's, it's like blasphemy almost and an insult to even be that kind of a person. Now, there are going to be some people. That's not a nice way to say trash people because you have people that have already made their choice. They don't want anything to do with God. They know that they're being ugly. They know that they're being malicious. They know that they're being tacky and sinful. And you know that they're fine with that. And if they're fine being feasted on and being used by all these unclean spirits to do what they're doing and then attacking people in the body of Christ or attacking other people, whatever they want to do as uh, lawless people, that's fine. But you don't need to be like that, okay? Their judgment is already set. There's a reason why people go to hell. Hell is nothing but a garbage dump. So the way the Lord sees it is if you want to be trash, I'm going to treat you like trash and I'm going to put you where trash goes in Gehenna where you burn trash okay so that's that's really that's how he sees it because the, the sin nature in itself is already a curse as it is you can't even get into heaven like that because you're pretty much you're done for the lord came and corrected that now you have the laws and the instructions of how to walk in your newness of life and your new identity but you don't even want to do that you know you want to stay spiritually defiled and spiritually unclean so um and just continue to defile yourselves and uh, make yourself susceptible to these spirits that God doesn't even want you to have anything to do with. So it, it just was bringing a lot of different scriptures to my mind. Like, you know, how the Lord tells us to have no fellowship with unbelievers and just because uh, it can defile you spiritually or don't fellowship with Christians who are partaking in sin. That's 1 Corinthians 